the son of the Duke, John Mara, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. My condolences on the passing of Frank Gifford to you, sir. Thank you very much, Rich. Yeah, it was a, a sad, sad day uh, for all of us here. So what's your first memory of Frank Gifford? You know, for me, it was, uh, I was probably five or six years old, just going to our training camp and meeting him for the first time. And he was a larger-than-life figure uh, for me and somebody that I idolized right away. And like many kids who, who grew up in my generation, I mean, we all wanted to be uh, either Mickey Mantle or Frank Gifford. And uh, just seeing him uh, run onto the field at Yankee Stadium in that blue number 16 was an a, a, a image that I'll always have etched in my mind. Uh, you know, he was a great uh, player for us, a great ambassador for us, and uh, a great uh, representative of the National Football League for so many years. You called him the ultimate giant. What do you mean by that? I mean, I, I think you could make the case that he was the most important player in the history of our franchise. I mean, he came along at a time, 1952, where the, the NFL was really struggling as a league to uh, attract the fans and, and gain recognition. And, and, you know, all of a sudden we, we have a tremendous uh, uh, string of, of, of successful seasons in the late uh, 1950s. And he was the star uh, of that team, the most recognizable player on that team, the matinee uh, idol, uh, the, one, the, the, the player that everybody idolized and, and wanted to be like. And, uh, you know, we rose to prominence, as did professional football, uh, during that period in the late 50s and early 60s. And all of a sudden, our our, our uh, team is selling out uh, every Sunday, something that has continued uh, to this day. And, and a lot of that is attributable to the players like Frank Gifford that came along during that era. I'm on the phone with uh, Giants owner John Mara here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your father and Frank Gifford were inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame 20 years apart, 77 for Gifford. 97 for your dad, and they presented each other. What was their relationship like? It was a father-son relationship uh, almost right from the beginning. I mean, my father scouted and drafted Frank in, in 1952, and they immediately developed a, a close bond that lasted for the rest of their lives. And you know, he was always at the family function. He he uh, rode to our home games with my mother and sisters uh, every Sunday, and. Uh, was always around, but they, they had a special relationship, both in good times and in bad. And um, uh, he, he was always there uh, for my father, and, and vice versa. And it was a, a special bond, unlike uh, you know, with any other player and owner that I've seen. Anyway, was, the two of them were very close. And uh, as I said, I think it was as close to a father-son relationship as anything. If um, Frank had the chance to see your dad last night, which we assume he did, what do you think that conversation was like? John? Uh, you know, I think they they would have embraced and uh, talked about old times and um, told each other how much they, they care for one another because that was something that they that they did in life, and I'm sure that's going to continue uh, up there as well. It was just a, it was a, a very special relationship that, that he had with my dad and with our entire family. Now it's because we all take for granted now that players are 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 on TV selling stuff and uh, being in front of the camera. Um, my gosh, it seemed half your team was selling $5 footlongs about it, you know, over the last <laughs> 10 years, John. But th th it was Frank the first one to do that in the NFL, do you think? I don't know. If, I don't know if he was actually the first, but he was the first one that people remember. He's certainly the first one that I remember. I mean, he was doing it while he was a player. And, uh, you know, he, he moved right into it when his playing career ended. And, um, you know, we do the, the sports on the news on, on Channel uh, 2, uh, CBS. Uh, and then he was in the CBS uh, broadcast booth for, for games. I and mean, he did it at a very early age. And I think he really set the trend uh, for other players to move into broadcasting. And, uh, you know, he did it with uh, such ease and, and grace. He, he really set quite a high standard for it. But he, he's the first one that most of us remember doing that. Yeah, and then he and Summerall are really um, the, the best ever going from playing to a play-by-play -play position. Normally, players, obviously, are the analysts. Uh, I don't think we're going to ever see another uh, group like that again, John, if you think, I think about you're, it. I think you're probably right about that. He had a unique skill, Frank. He could, he could do the play-by-play -play as well as anybody, and he could be an analyst as well as anybody and conduct interviews. And just look at the events he covered around the world. I mean, from you know Olympics to... 
alpine skiing to, to you know swimming and diving. I mean, he did it all, and he, he was a real professional. Now, uh, I know uh, this happened just 24 hours ago. Are there any discussions right now about the Giants doing something in his honor for the season? John? You know, we're, we're talking about that right now, but um, I'm sure we'll do something for him, but we haven't finalized any plans as of yet. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.